Hey y'all, Dekumon here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. Last time, we took on the physical ranged DPS roll line, and I'm still of two minds about that class. For the most part, it was pretty good. I just kind of felt like, I don't know, maybe we just started with like one of the weakest ones and one of the longest ones. But I loved Ishgard. Ishgard was straight up the best one. This one wasn't bad. I'd probably say it's third at this point. Behind Ishgard and Alamigo. But we're not quite done yet. One last quest line has appeared. The master quest line. The one that appears after you clear all the others. Now, technically, this is a 6.1 quest line. But we're here. I want to get this out of the way. And it doesn't really have anything to do with 6.1. It's just that's when it was released. Anyway, it's time to eat some better snow. Well, if it isn't Dekumon, all around good egg and champion of, well, the whole world, I suppose. Well, Travis Fast, my friend, you've heard all about your exploits defeating the blasphemies that plagued the good people of Eorzea and Doma. Sadly, there are other fell beasts that yet want for slaying, but fear not. Our efforts to bring them low proceed apace, and we've had naught but glad tidings from our allies. Perhaps the most surprising report came from Werlet, where soldiers led by the infamous Black Wolf fought alongside Alamegan troops for yet another hard-earned victory. Hmm. So it sounds like the blasphemy problem continues. Reports from Garlemald, however, suggest another blasphemy threat lurks in the snows, and we received a petition for assistance. Garlemald? Strange, don't you think? When the efforts of the, efforts of the final days began to spread in earnest, we encountered a great many monsters in Garlemald, but never a blasphemy. And to make matters worse, they say the guardians who chose to remain and rebuild have begun transforming into yet more hideous creatures. From what I understand, it was you and your comrades who brought an end to the source of the final days, is that right? Even so, it would appear its effects will linger a while longer. Until this malevolent influence on Axa subsides, I dare say this won't be the last time we hear of such sightings. As for the blasphemy, we have reason to believe it is a great deal stronger than any we faced thus far. Your strength and experience would prove quite valuable if you're willing to help, of course. Uh, why, of course I'll help! Is the Elsabard contingent not equipped to handle this right now? I'll deal with this. Oh, truly! Our contacts in Charlie would be thrilled to hear it. Though they did not explicitly request your presence, it was clear from the first they were hoping for it. Though, if I may be frank, I was not expecting Charlie, of all places, to be so concerned with the present state of Garlemald. What with their strict policies on non-intervention? Perhaps we'll find out the reason before this is all over. But that's an inquiry for another time. I'll not keep you any longer. Once you arrive in Garlemald, I should think the intelligence officer stationed there will be more than happy to apprise you of the situation. I'm sure they will. Back to Camp Broken Glass. Just a random soldier. Dekamon? The Dekamon? Well, it's an honor to have you with us, sir. I presume you've come to assist in our hunt for the blasphemy. Yeah, that would be the good assumption. Maxima and Lucy will be pleased to hear it if you would come this way. Another probably set of quests that should be voiced, but most likely aren't. Hmm. I don't think there are as many quests in this as there are in the normal one. Hopefully not, at least. It is good to see you, Dekamon. Though I wish it were under more fortuitous circumstances. We were reluctant to call upon you, knowing you but recently returned from the far reaches of the heavens. But we are no less glad for your aid. Eh, don't worry about it. Now then, I believe it best if the man who first discovered this blasphemy explained the situation. Oh, let me guess, Julius? Hmm. Forshino, what are you still doing out here in the north? Ah, Decamon. Good. You may forego introductions then. Thank you for answering our call for assistance. Your voice is too close to Maximus, man. As for the situation at hand, it concerns a joint effort between the Forum and the Lokerits to find new purpose for the Moon. While there is no longer need for a vessel to evacuate the star, we believe the Moon may yet prove to be of use to the people of Aetheris. After much contemplation, a rather ingenious proposal was put forward to transform the Moon into a repository for man's knowledge, an archive of hitherto unseen scale. So, Labyrinthos again. Charlian has long been the honor of boasting incompatible repositories of the world's knowledge, but it is far from perfect. Should calamity befall us, natural or otherwise, 
the wisdom of ages we have long labored to preserve would be lost. But the moon is beyond any such risk. What's more, it is beyond the jurisdiction of any one nation. Thus did we consult the allied nations of Eorzea, the Far East, and Ratsatan. They agreed to assembling a survey team to take measure of the moon and its potential as a repository. Huh. Here I thought you guys would use it as an exploration vessel. Our plans for assessment were forestalled, however, by the presence of an entity we believe to be a blasphemy in the Tower of Babel. Fudge. Yeah, that would be a heron burns to get into the moon if you haven't attuned to the Aetherites over there. Claims of Galleon citizens transforming into monsters shortly after its discovery only gave further credence to our initial supposition. But we've not all ill tidings to share. Reinforcements have been dispatched to aid in quelling the blasphemy threat. Lord Artorial and a member of Gadania's Keepers of the Entwined Serpents have already begun an investigation into the catalyst of these transformations. Hmm. Though the sky is no longer burn, and the spread of this affliction is much curtailed, we must remain vigilant. Until the blasphemy threat has been quelled, Alphino and Alice have graciously offered to help keep calm the people of Teratum, while we attend to the people here. Oh, hey! I get to see the twins, maybe? But the matter of the blasphemy is not so easily resolved, I am afraid. We recently met with certain complications that have hindered our plans. Yugiri and Fodola are presently deliberating how best to resolve the situation. Perhaps it would be best if you heard the details directly from them. Ah, <sighs> gonna be a lot of repeat voices here. I should like to join you if I may. As this endeavor was originally undertaken on Charlian's behalf, I feel it is my responsibility to see this through to its conclusion. Hmm. You two make an odd pair. I did not expect to see you here of all places, but I am no less glad for your presence. I presume word of the blasphemy is what brought you here. In which case, I believe it may be best if a member of the reconnaissance team's guard explain the situation. Random number three. Well, he ain't that random. An acquaintance of yours. Yeah, long time no see, Lawrence. What are you doing here, buddy? Seriously, man. We're literally getting all the quest lines together here. It's not surprising, I suppose. <laughs> I'd heard tell you had the worldly sort, but fuck me if I know where you heard my name before. <laughs> I'm just a lowly sort for hire, hoping to fatten my purse with a touch of mercenary work after taking my leave from Limsa. The job sounded simple enough, but well, I'm sure you wouldn't be here if it weren't, eh? <sighs> First, he's gonna hide his identity. But you didn't come all this way to hear about me, did you? The blasphemy we're after is making its nest in the upper reaches of the Tower of Babel. The auxiliary sector, I believe it was. But it wasn't alone. A sizable horde of beasts was circling about it like little knights protecting their queen. Naturally, we thought to strike from a distance before engaging in earnest, but not a single bullet reached its mark. Shield? They were protected by some manner of mystical shroud, as far as I could figure. Without a keen eye for magic, I don't see anyone getting through. Hmm. By the time we understood the futility of the situation, we'd been spotted. Retreat was our only option. Pains me to say it, but there won't be any brute force in our way through this one. My understanding was that once transformed, these blasphemies are completely devoid of ether. With what energies could it create such a barrier? Well, that's the question, isn't it? My first thought was some heretofore unknown technique for conjuring shields. Needs to say I'm out of my depth when it comes to matters of magic. Which is precisely why I plan to speak with the Elder Seeds here when she arrives. If anyone can help us find a way to overcome the blasphemy's protection, it's her. Holy crap, we really are getting everyone. In the meantime, can we trouble you to help with the not so small matter of people changing into beasties? The blasphemy's hold was large enough when first we found it. We can't afford for more to join its ranks. Very well. We shall reconvene with Lord Artorial and discuss strategy. Yeah, before you go, there's something else you should know about that tower. From the moment we set foot inside, I could swear there was someone or something watching us. I shrugged it off, thinking it a figure of my imagination, but in hindsight, I'm not so sure. Hmm. Perhaps I should go do a little scouting of the tower myself. Nothing to worry about now, though. But best keep on your guard when we do finally return to the tower, eh? Alright. Ah, of course, Artorial's here, too. Ah, oh, Digimon! It's good to have you with us, my friend. Indeed, the Ripper Forest is not an easy one, and a man of your talents will prove invaluable to our efforts. 
Ah, we both recently returned from the reconnaissance when we made a few rather surprising discoveries. First and foremost, we were pleased to discover that no one residing within Camp Broken Glass or Terratum had turned, no doubt thanks to the concerted efforts of Maxima, Alphino, and Alice. However, we have reason to believe those who did turn all hail from Locus Amaneus. Hmm. You mean Corvos, the Guardian's ancestral home? The very same. When the ill effects of the final days began to manifest there, a number of Guardian refugees from the region sought sanctuary here in Garlemald. But the capital was already in ruins when they arrived. They were offered asylum, but many refused and instead chose to fend for themselves on the outskirts of the city. Ah, oh, that sounds lovely. We have a mind to go and speak with them directly if you would care to join us. Perhaps together we can learn whether their recent circumstances has triggered such terrible change among their people. Hmm. What indeed? Frozen Hope! What in the heck are all of those? They are- oh. Ooh, Grade 6 Tinctures. Those are cute. The time being of the essence, I believe it prudent we split into two groups and cover as much ground as we may, as quickly as possible. If you and Master Fortuna would require after the people evict the spoils, the two of us shall see what we may learn at Liminal Station 4 when you finish the premium to stay. Alright. So I'm gonna hang out with Fortuna for this quest line. Or at least this part of the quest line. Hmm. Victor Spoils is to the east of here, yes? Let us be off. I know, I know, I'm mixing up voices again. Sheesh. There's too many characters and I keep giving them half of them the same voice. <laughs> There's too many characters! I'm sorry! Oh yeah, this place has given me some unpleasant memories. That they should choose to reside here in the cold, I can but presume they will not be amenable to conversation. Even so, we must not be deterred. Come. I remember this area of refugees. This was a very heartbreaking quest line that didn't have to happen the way it did. And these guys are probably still salty. Assuming they're even here. A talk. What is there to talk about? We've no home, no future, nothing. This doom spells the end for us all. Dude, I'm half surprised this one didn't pop right there from talking to him. Come to hear our grievances, have you? Hm. More than you have time to hear them, I'm sure. We've lost one, but two homes. Our loved ones, our livelihood. There's nothing left. I served my time at the military eye. For what? To lose all my friends? My son. And I was not to show for it but our claim to Locus Amaneus. Or so we thought. Calamity was visited upon us for reasons we know not. And when we turned to flee, it followed on our heels to Golemold. Ruin and ash at every turn. Sheesh. Like I said, a real happy chipper bunch. Unfortunately, up here, and now all we've got is this one, the Despondent. I can't imagine why you or anyone else would feign interest in our troubles, but if you insist, you'll find a great many of the people here were in the military at one time or another. Some retired with honors and others without. Sadly, I'm one of the latter. Bore one too many scars in battle. Even so, my contributions were enough to warrant leave to move to Locus Amaneus. It was a land of warmth and bounty. The Cavosi Rebellion admittedly proved troublesome for a time. But it didn't take long for the Second Legion to quell their uprising. You could practically drown in the calm of sea and quiet. And then one day, the skies came in with flame. We were overrun by all manner of foul beasts born of our brothers and sisters. The Second Legion barely had time to assemble their forces before they were overrun and snuffed out. We barely escaped with our lives. But we were greeted only with more rack and ruin on our arrival here. And we've not the strength to take our home back from the Cavosi a second time. There's nothing left for us anywhere. Hmm. That's an interesting thought. I wonder if we're going to actually go deal with that at some point. Did you learn aught of how they came to be in such dire straits? Oh yeah. And it's pretty much a sob story like I expected. I see. I heard much of the same. The military forces of Locus Amaneus were defeated in the wake of the final days. Desperate to survive, they naturally fled to Garlemald seeking sanctuary. It was their hope the might of the Empire would allow them to reclaim the home they were forced to abandon, but the capital was already in ruin when they arrived. Needless to say, the lands they long revered to be the ancestral home of the Guardian people may remain forever lost to them. Those unfamiliar with history would believe they have always resided in the bitter cold climes of northern Ilsebad, but that was only after the Kavosi invaded 800 years prior. With the advent of Magitek, I imagine it was all too easy for Emperor Solus to rally his people and take back what they believe to be rightfully theirs. Mm -hmm. 
Yet history would tell us true, that the land they call Locus Amaneus has been known by other names, and served as home to myriad peoples. Indeed, one need only look back to the Adigan's reign in the Third Astral Era to give the lie the Guardians' claims of sovereignty. Yet even had they such ancestral ties to Locus Amaneus, antecedents cannot justify their animosity to foreign peoples. Animosity poorly veiled by delusions of justice, as has been the case for so many nations throughout history. Would that man have the sense and strength of will to break free from such change of hatred and stupidity? Help! Someone help! They've... they've turned! Another monster! Quickly, Decamon, we haven't a moment to lose! I fi yeah. Seems I was right, these guys were about to pop. Well, or where'd the other ones go? One of my mates seemed unwell, so I thought to come over and look in on him. Next thing I know, he... he... he got ugly. No one appears to be injured. Did he not attack? No, he just walked off in the dimension of the tower. In a daze, as if it was calling to him. Oh. He could not have gone far. If you would go after him, I will remain here and see that all are accounted for. Oh, it's Anima all over again. It's basically the blasphemy is controlling them. Hello. There you are. Sorry, buddy. I have to put you down. Get this out of the way. And yeah, I have confirmed. You definitely just go straight to the Confitor combo. Take this guy out of contention. <sighs> Back to Fortuno. Where'd the others get off to, man? The beast is slain, then. Thank the heavens. For a blessing, no others have turned. And a measure of calm has been restored, if only for the moment. Witnesses were able to offer a clue as to the source of the transformation. They claimed the afflicted was listening to this radio. Even now, it continues to play the same cryptic message. God dang it, the radios again? Only this time they're not protecting people. Empire. No more. Never again. Rise. Ashes. Though disported by radio static, you can hear a voice saying, The Empire is no more. Never again shall it rise from the ashes. Ooh. But how is this possible? There are no facilities left standing that could possibly deliver such a broadcast. Anima was capable of sending such a message. Last time this happened, the signal came from the Tower of Babel, yeah. This is coming from the blasphemy in the tower. Be that as it may, Anima is no more, and the Tower of Babel has fallen into disrepair, by your hand no less. Which begs the question, who, or perhaps what, could be behind this? Like I said, it's the blasphemy. Uh Take him on! Ask the Foshino! A moment if you would! Oh damn! Shortly after we finished our inquiry at Limnal Station 4, Lord Emrek and Admiral Moab arrived and requested an audience. Apologies for our late arrival. Knowing firsthand the devastation of which blasphemies are capable, I discussed the matter with the Admiral, and we were of one mind that the situation warranted our immediate presence. Is it safe to presume a representative of the survey team has already arrived? Indeed, I have. Thank you for coming all this way on such short notice. Recent events here at the camp have proved most enlightening. Yes, they have. Time to confiscate everyone's radios! Hmm, and we gotta get to the tower fast. And this is the aforementioned radio. Empire. No more. Never again. Yep. A harsh reminder of their misfortune. Sufficient to push some wayward few over the edge, it would seem. Yet there still remains the question of who is sending this message, and from where. Glory everlasting, Garlemald. That's new. For glory everlasting, for Garlemald. No, it couldn't be. Hmm? You recognize this message? A mantra often spoke by Lady Nerva. Anyone who lived in the provinces under his authority could scarcely forget those words. Nerva? He sought to claim the throne after the assassination of Emperor Varus, did he not? After civil war broke out, 
He all but disappeared according to the intelligence we managed to gather. But how could he have managed to breach the tower undetected? To have done so and remain unnoticed by the creatures infesting the tower seems a nigh impossible task. Unless... You think the voice on the radio is the blasphemy? Yes! Yes, I do! And I also think it's Nerva, because I think they're one and the same. I do. And it was with Anima. These radios are somehow attuned to whatever signal it emits with the tower. What's more, I believe the true identity of the blasphemy is Nerva. Robbed of the throne and forced to watch the empire he longed to command crumble before his very eyes. If such loss did not drive him to the same fate as Quintus, the despair he felt no doubt overcame and turned him. Mm hmm. Nervous decision of. Nervous decisions of. God damn. Well, the fact that Merle Webb needs a new voice, I'm sorry. She's. I need to make her voice more feminine. Even if she does. She even sounds like the voice I'm trying to give her, but it, it doesn't sound the same. And there's just too many voices with the same, like, nasally pitch. I gotta give her something different. Nervous daughters of Gunjo aside. Nervous delusions of Gunjo aside. The Guardian's plight sounds not unlike the Sahagan, desperate to preserve their spawning grounds. Indeed, though unscrupulous by any measure, the Guardians found solidarity in their ideology, as did the people of Ishgard in the church. Adrift without home or purpose, it is all too easy for despair to take hold. Would that a remedy were as simple as offering them land as we did the Sahagan? In all likelihood, the Guardians would refuse to settle for aught less than what they believed to be their ancestral homeland of Locus Amaneus, a claim the Kavosi would readily take arms to denounce. We would do well not to further fan the flames of animosity twixt them. Then perhaps at the very least we can offer them peace of mind, and a means to regain some semblance of stability in their lives. To offer them true comfort and stability, Garlemald must be rebuilt. Uh, uh, but we're gonna make sure we uh, get the proper priest a peace treaty first, right? By no means an easy solution, but perhaps the only one worthy of pursuit. Of course, this new Garlemald must remain a sovereign nation, free from the oversight of others. Aye, they would see no meaning in it otherwise. If I'm not mistaken, Alphino and Alice are already made strides in helping the people here regain some normalcy in their day-to-day -day living. A most important first step, but it will mean little without proper leadership. Rather than a single individual, perhaps a governing body of sorts would prove more effective. Hmm. A number of former Senate members among the refugees at Camp Broken Glass, as I recall. With their help, creating a framework for new governance is not an impossibility. Then, let us call the people together and see what they make of our proposal. Oh. And this is just the end of the second quest, and we're getting on all these cutscenes. Again, this should be voiced. The final days have taken much from you all. I can imagine the pain you feel in the face of such immeasurable loss. And though the final days have been averted, its effects yet linger, and a blasphemy has been born of your suffering. Decisive action must be taken before further harm is wrought upon you. To overcome such adversity is too great a task for any one person. But as a people united, there may yet be hope for the morrow. While well, it is not our place to decide how you will move forward, we would offer a small measure of guidance. We were told a number of former members of your Senate yet remain among you. Would you be amenable to an interim government led by these individuals until such time as Garlemald can be rebuilt? Well, somebody speak up. Rebuild Garlemald? Is such a thing truly possible? <laughs> Even if we do cobble together some governing council, they won't be marking anything in that pile of ash we dare call Garlemald. There's no going back to Locus Amaneus either. Wreck and ruin. Those are our only options. Dude, you keep talking like that, people are gonna start turning here! I realize to rebuild Garlemald is a seemingly impossible task, but you needn't undertake it alone. My children are working with members of the First Legion as we speak to begin an organized relief effort. 
and there are others from the provinces no doubt willing to lend their expertise. You need but ask, not as would-be conquerors, but as brothers and sisters of this star, and others will heed your call. If you should still see no merit in the rebuilding of Garlemald, then I would instead offer you residency in Charlian. I promise you will be welcomed with open arms. Really? Wow. Yeah, figured. Charlian. So now you expect us to go and lick boots in some country we've never even heard of? My apologies if I appeared overly forward in my proposition. Considering our strict policies on non-intervention until but recently, it is not surprising that you are unfamiliar with my homeland. It is an island nation to the north, home to myriad peoples, which is why I believe it would not prove difficult to accommodate you and yours. To be clear, you would not be migrating to Charlian to live in servitude. You have my word that each and every one of you would be guaranteed citizenship upon entry. But why exactly would you go to such lengths for us? For the conquerors you barely know. Mostly to keep you from becoming the conquerors again. Charlian was long aware of the coming doom that would be the final days, and so we were preparing to evacuate this star, taking as many people and resources as our stores would allow. Huh. You know, maybe we should turn the moon into the new Garlemald if they don't want to live here. That's a crazy thought. Hmm. Initially, it was our intent to save the people of Garlemald as well, but we had not forgotten your transgressions invading Alamigo. Your rejection of our entreaties for peace. After a great deal of deliberation, it was decided that we would forego an invitation to Garlemald, a determination made with great trepidation. Wow, they were literally going to leave the Garleans to die. We had convinced ourselves it was ultimately for the greater good, though I can think of at least one individual who would continue to protest. Yeah, Alphano. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom. It is indolence. Oh. There's some famous words. Sage counsel I brazenly cast inside when confronted with the final days in earnest. But Decimon here and his companions refused to forsake those we were otherwise unwilling to save. With great risk to themselves, they achieved the impossible and opened my eyes to the error of the forum's decision. All of the roads lead to ruin regardless. Perhaps we should at least consider it. Oh, there we go. Finally! <sighs> I keep forgetting how stubborn Garleans are. Then, it would be my pleasure to invite you all to Camp Broken Glass. We shall have warm food and beds both. <laughs> and by both, I mean we only have two beds. You all have to share. Still got a couple stubborn ones. Fine, stay here and freeze. Or worse, turn. Admiral Wellup and I shall speak with Maxima and the others, and consider how best to assist the Garleans moving forward. Should we broach the subject of the blasphemy, however, we will not hesitate to call upon you. Oh, don't worry. I'm still be hanging around. I'm pretty sure this quest line's not over yet. I think there's, like, either four or five quests in this line. Mm-mm. That's not good. We had an eavesdropper. Ah, there we are. Finally. Good night. This thing takes forever some days. Alright. Next quest, Fortuno. Misguided Few. With the Guardian's hearts at ease, the likelihood of others turning has greatly diminished. That said, it is no cause for us to go complacent. We must needs find a way to overcome the Blasphemy's protective warding. If I understand correctly, a Blasphemy's behavior is oftentimes influenced by the memories and emotions of their originator. In which case, it would be prudent to learn more of the man who birthed this monstrosity. How fortuitous then that a number of soldiers from the, se ah, from the Third Legion are in our custody. For our mercy, their tempering was not so severe as to be beyond our ability to heal them. They are presently being treated at Camp Broken Glass. 
Perhaps the camp's intelligence officer can tell us who among them knows aught of Nerva's whereabouts. Or their disposition. Hmm. Well, back to broken glass. Alright, boss. Let me know. Who are we talking to? Anybody? Come on. I see. Perhaps it'd be best if you speak with Vergilla, the Gatus of the Third Legion. That's a new name. She's still on the mend, but the Kaiogens aren't like to oppose a brief conversation. If you would wait here just a moment. Alright. Vergilla. Oh. Recognize the armor. Yeah, do I look familiar? A Yorzea's champion, I presume. And one of his cohorts. What business have you with me? Isabad is faced with imminent crisis, and we believe the knowledge you bear may be key in stopping it. Uh And this is where we just break her spirit by telling her her CEO is now the monster threatening them all. Thus do we believe the blasphemy to be Nerva. His whereabouts in the wake of Gardamold's fall, however, or lack thereof, give credence to our theory. Lord Nerva. From what we have pieced together thus far, you were one of the last to see him alive. Please, will you not share with us what you know? Very well, though I suspect what meager knowledge I possess shall avail you not. Well? I last spoke with Lord Nerva shortly after the warring with the First Legion began. Damn. Cloistered within the lower levels of the Senegum Imperialis, he spent the better part of the day listening attentively to the radio. He seemed hopeful, or perhaps desperate, for news that the tide might turn in our favor. The next day, I left for the front line. It was there I heard a terrible noise, which I assume came from the Tower of Babel. Then darkness took me, and I remember naught after that. I was told the radios protected those close to them from the effects of the tower, in which case, Lord Nerva would have remained unaffected. But he has ever been devoted to Garlemald, for glory everlasting, he would say. To watch the empire he loved so dearly crumble, I can think of no one who would be more stricken by the sight. It would seem we were right to assume what became of Nerva. Mm-hmm. And it does not surprise me the beast would choose to make its nest within the Tower of Babel. It stands atop the remains of the Imperial Palace, and the throne he revered so highly. But the Empire is no more, and Lord Nerva, apparently, is no longer the man he once was. He deserves to be laid to rest, together with his dreams of glory. Yep. We will fail the beast, you have my word. Assuming we can figure out how to get to it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Kanesena? <laughs> Apologies for the direction. Kanesena has arrived, and we're ready to depart. It is good to see you, Decamon, Master Fauchonel. I have spoken with Lawrence of the Ward protecting the blasphemy, and I am quite confident some manner of ether-based magic bars our path. Really? If I may be so bold, Edesitia, we reached the same conclusion initially, but that simply is not possible. These creatures born of the final days are devoid of ether. As such, they would be unable to produce such a barrier in a manner to which we are accustomed. Do you suppose it possible they manipulated dynamis to achieve a similar effect? Hmm, really? I too thought to dismiss the notion of a barrier fueled by ether. That is, until I stepped foot here in Garlemald. Even now I can sense streams of ether flowing towards the tower. Ooh. Its purpose was, after all, to harvest reserves of energy sufficient to reach the moon. Even if one was incapable of manipulating ether directly, it stands to reason control of the tower would alleviate such a need. 
It is merely conjecture, of course. I cannot say for certain until I have examined the currents with my own eyes. Might I ask you to accompany us? Take them on. Naturally, of course I'm going. Hmm? I would join you as well, if I may. My injuries would keep me from being of use in battle, but my knowledge of the land should serve just as well as my blade. I will not be opposed to your company, but it is not my decision to make. She may go, so long as she remains under watch by you and the others. Very good. Might I suggest we begin with Regio Urumbasima? I sensed the greatest confluence of ether in that vicinity. I have no idea where that is, so I'll just follow the quest marker. And there's this mysterious person again. Alright, found the spot finally. Well? As I thought, the ether stream here flows toward the tower, as do all others in this region, no doubt. Mm, so it's the tower itself making the barrier. This convergence first began when the Tolophoroi erected spires in all corners of Eorzea to fuel the Tower of Babel. But once destroyed, this divergence of ether should have ceased. But the tower itself didn't get destroyed, just the little ones. Alright, whoever you are, if you've business with us, quit just skulking about in the shadows and speak your peace. Were you there in the tower, wasn't it? Oh! Nero! My, my, you're sharper than you look. And that's saying something, because he's actually quite a snappy dresser. I recognize you. Nero, yes? Why are you following us? <gasps> Who said I'm following you? Being a native of Gardamol does not stand to reason I might be inclined to come and see what has become of my home. I know not what you're scheming, but we've no time to entertain your games. Perhaps Master Goldland would make better company for you. Now oh, spare me. I am a man of great ambition and greater intellect, far beyond the scope of anything Garland could hope to achieve. He still keeps his head in the clouds, while I would set my sights to the stars beyond. Which is why you snuck into the tower. But like us, you couldn't get past the blasphemy to reach the transponder. Yes, well... I was very much hoping you would dispense with that little obstacle. And having caught wind of your plans, curiosity compelled me to see if you were truly up to the task. Clearly you are not. Do you have reason to believe we are not? Or perhaps, does the great genius Nero mean to dispense with the blasphemy himself? Oh, far be it from me to steal your glory having come all this way. But, as I am feeling generous, I will tell you what I learned during my time in the Tower of Babel. I was able to access its systems, you see, and discovered one of those dreadful spires still appears to be active. Impossible. They all vanished when Anima was destroyed. Yes, and I've heard your escapades reclaiming the remains of the Emperor. You obviously have failed to reclaim his entire body. Seriously. As it stands, a piece remains powering a tower at Fabrica. Fabrica? Ah, yes. The manufacturing district. Just north of the erstwhile Imperial Palace. A rather impressive feat, considering how these lands are so utterly devoid of ether. Barely enough to sustain life, let alone the spire. But if one were to use Ferris's remains to forcibly create a confluence of sorts... Yeah, precisely. And from what I gleaned of the tower's systems, its heart serves as its core. Coursing not with blood, but your precious ether. And now never has a master surfeit to shore up his defenses. How fortuitous he should find so perfect an impetus for his design, stolen from better minds than his own. How very like him. Ooh, snubbed! Oh, did I say that aloud? Oh, you'll forgive me if I fail to show concern for your ire. <laughs> if what you say is true, these lands could never hope to recover from such a paucity of life energies. You must hurry and find Varys' heart. To both spare the land of this wanton harvesting, 
and deny the blasphemy the source of its protection. Are we to presume you have any intention of aiding us? As I said, I have no intention of stealing your glory. Though I fear victory may soon slip through your fingers if you do not act quickly. The Tower of Babel was designed specifically for Anima to serve as its core. Never forcing himself upon the system has caused it to grow increasingly unstable. If my calculations are correct, and they always are, it will not be long before his presence triggers a system meltdown. The resulting explosion will destroy whatever tenuous streams of ether breathe life into the lands of Gardamold. But, more importantly, we will lose our only means of reaching the moon. The heavens forever denied my genius. How so very unfortunate. In any event, to it seem time is of the essence. Oh, that's all well and good. But even if we know which district to search, finding the heart will be like looking for a needle in a bloody haystack. Emphasis on the bloody. Actually, I may know where we could start. Hmm? It's all rather hazy, but I still have vague recollections of my time serving Anima when I was enthralled. We were commanded to erect some manner of facility tucked away in a corner of Fabrica. I remember not what it was for, but it's as good a place as any to begin our search. Yeah, probably is. Well, that certainly sounds promising, but surely this facility will be heavily guarded. Or... Ah, but maybe it wouldn't be too best to divide our forces. If it's just the four of us, it shouldn't prove too difficult to sneak inside and find the heart. Meanwhile, our main force can stand ready to storm the Tower of Babel when the barrier gives out. Alright, leave it to us. Be safe, yeah. Deal with this. Shouldn't be a big problem. So what, am I on heart duty, or am I going with the main force? This is Levio. Oh, God damn it! not again. What? Very well. We shall return at once. A number of guardians have left camp for the Tower of Babel. I see. No! They have somehow misunderstood the threat of the tower and convinced themselves that Nerva has taken refuge there. Still clinging to their ill-placed patriotism, no doubt. They could not have gone far. If we act quickly, perhaps they could be found before they come to harm. Mm. A wise man would not waste his time on a few wayward refugees. I thought you Charlie and scholars knew better. To ignore the plight of one I conceivably safe was not wisdom, sir. If it is all the same to you, Decamon, I would join you. Alright. Go looking for refugees. I will return to camp and begin preparations for our assault on the tower. Hmm. And as for Nero, he will continue to be a thorn in my side. Right? Yeah, and I suppose I should go as well. You idiots won't be able to accomplish anything without me, as usual. Uh, I do miss Nero. He's such a pain in the ass. Though I am unarmed, I promise not to be a burden. That said, it would behoove us to avoid any undue confrontations if possible. Now then, let us be off. Fortuno is now accompanying me. Awesome! Where am I going? Straight north. Now, this area looks familiar. This is where I was having my little solo instance when I was outside my own body. Fun times. Hmm. No trace of them here. Let us keep searching. Uh, where to next? And again, thankfully these guys are far enough away not to bother me and I'm high enough level not to be threatened by them. Help! Someone please! Did you hear that? It came from over there. Let's go. I got... And they're up to? Oh, uh, where are we going? Where are we going? There we are. Uh-oh. Got some base days here. Here, you two get close. I don't want to have to do this combo twice. Woo, that does good damage. It really does. <sighs> Alright, we found him. Whew. 
You all right, guys? Oh, it's you three idiots. You! You're the ones who came to speak with us before! The ones we snubbed! We heard Lord Nerva had returned. I was assembling his forces in the tower, but... Yeah, you missed the whole part about the forces and him are monsters. Clearly you were not paying as good attention as you thought you were. Oh, what will Nerva know? Then there really is nothing left for us. Oh, time to turn into monsters ourselves then. Poof. I'll not deny your situation is dire, but you are not without a path forward. I believe you have the passion and conviction needed to rebuild Garlemald, if you so chose. Or failing that, you could begin life anew in Charlian. Well? But rebuild Garlemald? Now there's no point in entertaining so lofty a dream. And we would sooner die than suffer life under the rule of another. We're too damn proud for our own goods, it's obvious. You would sooner seek death than sanctuary. Your resolve is admirable, but sorely misplaced. Mm-hmm. If you would not seek out a mold rise from the snow and ashes here in Ilsabad, might you consider venturing onto a new frontier? What? A new frontier? And where exactly is this land right for exploration? Ah. There. On the moon. Ah, oh, he stole my idea! <laughs> it is our goal to create a repository of man's knowledge there, free from the jurisdiction of any nation. As I understand, the magitech and technological advancements of Gardamold were without peer. Your expertise would be indispensable in the endeavor. Or should you be willing, of course. Also, you'd be under the rule of, uh, a bunch of rabbits. Hope you like carrots. What? You would expect us to go and live on the bloody moon? Is such a thing even possible? <laughs> what? Have you a better alternative? Welcome back, Nero. Lest you forget, Garlemald did not rise to grandeur from complacency in the present or rumination of the past. We live for the future. It is in our blood, like conquering and being assholes. Life is not without its hardships, of course. Even I have met with the occasional stumbling block. But even should I stumble, my eyes are forever fixed skyward, seeking even greater heights. The Empire may be lost, but I still possess a great deal of knowledge gained from it and a desire to seek more. The very notion of exploring the moon is an unprecedented prospect, and that you would balk at the proposition boggles the mind. Consider this. You have heard that beasts of the final days were born of those hapless souls that had given up on everything, yes? If that is indeed the case, can you tell me why you still stand before me? Hmm? Hmm? Because deep down you believe your life is yet worth living. Deep down you long to reach for the unreachable. Well, or perhaps you don't. If you should choose to lay down and die here in the snow, that's none of my concern. <laughs> Reach for the unreachable. Oh, that sounds like something I would have said back at the academy. All right, we'll go. I suppose it's better than dying here in the snow, as you so grimly put it. Then we must first dispense with the blasphemy that commands the tower. Ah, oh, okay. It's hard to believe Lord Nerva, of all people, could be turned into one of those monsters. Please, you must stop him. Put his soul to rest. Uh, his soul's long gone, but I can put what's left of him to rest. Thank you, and sorry for causing all this trouble. You better be sorry. Sheesh. The things I do for some of these people. Thank you for that rousing call to action. But I thought you had no interest in meddling in our affairs. Oh, lest you misunderstand, I abhor the idea of my countrymen blindly following nobles they know next to nothing about. Besides, it would be a most piteous sight for not a single guardian to be among those venturing to the moon. Besides me, of course. Who else am I to prevail upon to learn of new findings up there? <laughs> Ah, uh, you'd be surprised. Ooh, I get a nice choice of materials here. Which ones do I not have any of? Uh, tenacity ones would actually be really good. You know, being a tank main and all. Could use a couple more of those. All right, next quest, Forlorn Glory. 
From what Nero has told us, time is now a luxury we can ill afford. Let us return to Camp Broken Glass, if only for the moment. The others are no doubt finishing their preparations for battle. Mm hmm. Plus, I hear things stomping around, and that's concerning me. <sighs> I should hope the other's absence means all proceeds apace. With any luck. Kane? Good. You're here. With the recent arrival of reinforcements, our preparations are all but complete. Oh shit. He and Andralbon? Apologies for our lateness. It seems we're at least in time to help deliver the crushing blow. Aye, and if the fates are kind, this will be the last we see of these damnable blasphemies. Commander Alden, Lord Heian, thank you both for coming. Hmm? Ring ring, who else is a calling? Yes. Yes, of course. Understood. Lawrence and the others have reclaimed Varys' heart. The barrier protecting the blasphemy should soon dissipate. And the time has come at last to storm the Tower of Babel. Alright. Admiral Wellweb and Lord Emmerich await our arrival at its base. I suspect a solo duty is coming. Or maybe an actual duty duty. <sighs> then we should be about it, eh? I suppose this is as good an opportunity as any to keep my hammer from rusting over. <laughs> I will accompany you as well. As the forum's representative and a member of the survey team, I feel it is my responsibility to see this through to the end. Alright, just be careful. Are you sure you wouldn't rather wait here? I didn't take you for the fighting type, yeah. Didn't you hang up your noliths and Alphano has them now? Despite appearances, I am no stranger to the battlefield. Indeed, I have seen my fair share, traveling the world in service of the Forum. Though I may not be the equal of Alpha Noah Alice, eh? We shall not find ourselves wanting. I can promise you that much. Alright. I just don't want to have to explain to the twins their father got injured on my watch. That would, uh, that'd be really bad. When you have all finished your preparations, we can reconvene at the Inxaladium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm suspecting a solo duty. <sighs> yep, I was right. Duty calls. All are present and accounted for. Shall we proceed? Oh, hey, look. I think he's wearing a... Uh, he is wearing Nolas. Your progress through the battle will be saved at certain points. Oh, so it's a multi-parter. All right, let's get this rolling. I suspect this will be a hell of a fight. <laughs> Nero in his armor, no less. Our objective is simple. Locate and eliminate the blasphemy Nerva. That the barrier guarding him is no more, a number of beasts will surely block the way at the auxiliary sector. And as if on cue. What the fresh hell? Off to a smashing start, I see. It would seem the tower will reach its limit far sooner than I anticipated. I'm probably going to leave. If we're to save the transporter, we must hurry and find Nava. Now! Oh, really? Alright. And we're off. At a sprint, no less. Alright, holy cow, we have a party here. Like a full on party. <laughs> Iron Nero. Wow. Alright, let me turn on the old tank stance here so we can really race some hell. I think the game really only expects me to deal with my two. What the hell was that? So I can't really seem to pull off aggro here. This one. Oh, we're gonna be shedding characters as we go. Wow, you actually have voice lines all of a sudden. These are sprinting. 
Yeah, no surprise there. Now with you! Be on mine. Yeah, that one. These things do not go down too difficult to... Ooh. Ooh. Some nasty looking ones here. Oh. Fine, I'll take the crew that I got. I think I just, yeah, I popped my wings by mistake. Damn it. It's all right. I shouldn't need them. That's a, that's a lot of nasty AoEs that I don't want to be standing in. Group them up, people. Tramplers just keep coming. So glad I'm doing this as a tank. But it is definitely hurting the damage value. Oops. Not Holy Circle twice in a row. We do the melee AoE first, and then we do Holy Circle. Oh my freaking lord! Get the big one. Yeah, get the big one, exactly. Raw Tizona! That takes care of a big chunk of them. Enough! I got to do this fast enough. Ooh, never mind. That definitely did it. Oh, I should clean up a little, a few of these little ones. stacks or whatever that is. I don't like it. Whew. Angry chicken down. We good? I mean, that was just the small fry. Is that the last of them? No, of course not. Uh, these things are never ending. 
We're gonna have to leave people behind, aren't we? Uh, of course not. We can't afford for them to impede our advance any further. Commander Alden, let us hold them here. Master Fortuno, take the others and go, quickly. Understood. So many void sent. Or, I know. Blasphemies, mini blasphemies. They all look like void sent to me. Oh, fudge. Oh, is it the four faced thing again? Yep. Nerva, Nerva turned into the four faced beast from Final Fantasy 13. Leave. Leave now. Godabolt is mine! Alright, there's our big baddie. Into the big old whammy combo. Good old one of these. Get as many atonements in as I can. Your legion? Oh, the hell with this. Oh, deadly laser beams incoming? Yep. Thought so. Oh, those linger. You dick! Is he gonna rescue my ass? Yep. <laughs> A very fancy rescue. Yeah, we're working on the whole defensive. Believe me, I'm giving him all of the blade combo I can. Oh, not the bloody deadly laser beams again. Uh. All right. at range. It's almost... Ah, I missed the Gorg Lane trigger. Son of a bitch. That bleed hurts. Let me uh, fix that here. Thank goodness I can do this to myself. Nope, so that bleed smarts. Used to doing the combo uh, with this fast enough. So my blade of valor ain't gonna do near as much damage. 
Or you can go completely untargetable. Oh, what the fresh hell? Bring them to Nero. Damn, he smoked them. I mean, I'll do. We'll both take this bullshit. Oh. the DPS for this. I'm trying, I'm trying. Believe me, I'm giving him all I got. Woo! Ah, my eyes. Oh, good. Four shots back up. Down already. Jeez. Thank you. I hadn't done that at Classic and heal themselves. That would have ended really badly. <laughs> Very cute. But glory everlasting indeed. Ah! You missed all the fun. Don't worry, it's gone for good now. Is it over? Has the danger passed? By a hair's breadth, perhaps, but yes. I'd say we've managed to avoid a fiery ruin and death. Lots of death. Our path to the moon is open once more. You mean my path, right? The duty of Charlian has ever been to chart the course of history, not to change it. Thus did we fervently hold to our policies of neutrality and non-intervention. In truth, it was all in service to our plans of exodus, to abandon this star to its ruinous fate. Harsh though it may sound, I still believe it was ultimately for the greater good. And yet you were ultimately wrong. Thanks to you and your comrades, however, it was a fate that did not come to pass. Charlian will now find a new way forward. Not merely for the preservation of knowledge, but for the betterment of this star and all who call it home. I believe I speak for all of the Forum when I say it would be an honor and a privilege to work towards such a goal alongside the Allied Nations. I'm getting a weird little screen tear there alongside him. Hmm. Aye, an age of true and everlasting peace is finally within our grasp, and we will seize it together. Mm-hmm. Nero's like, oh, spare me. <sighs> Time to clean this up, huh? Tis a relief to know we've no longer a need for battle. Despite my experience, I must confess I am ill-suited to it. The Allied Nation leaders, meanwhile, demonstrated an aptitude for combat far and above what I might expect from diplomatic figures. And you, my friend. I see now why they are so well regarded as Aeolia's champion. Eh, it was nothing. Just another day's work. The others have already begun the arduous journey home. But before you go, I would offer a word of thanks to the both of you. If not for your timely assistance, our plans would be forfeit, and the lands of Ilsebad forever defiled by the blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Oh please, I have no need for your platitudes. I labor only to further my own ends, nothing more. And then there's these three. Uh, we heard the news. Thank you for everything. With Lord Nerva laid to rest, we have the peace of mind to move on without regret. 
living way? Oh yeah, like uh, like I said, you go to the moon, you guys gotta deal with these little rascals. Oh, there you are! Now, what's this I've heard about you cleaning out the Tower of Babel? Are we finally ready to return to the moon? What? Oh, what fortuitous timing. Allow me to introduce you to Living Way of the Lopards, Moon Dweller and Overseer of the Survey Team. Living Way, these good people will be the moon's first residents. I trust you and the other Lopards will take good care of them. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> residents? Oh no! I, I mean, oh yes, splendid! After many, many long years of planning and preparation, the moon is absolutely, most definitely, ready to accommodate your stay. Oh, I'm going to have to go on building way to finish the greater cheese. I'm glad to hear it, and apologies for the delay. I must first confer with Lawrence and see to our final preparations. But your residence-to-be and the survey team shall be along ere long. Might I trouble you to relay word of our success to Sherbet at Rancid Han? I should think the tidings all the more heartening coming from you. Until next we meet. Fair enough. Gotta end the quest line where it began, so I guess this is the last one. I mean, we did just have the giant fight with the blasphemy, of course. I don't expect a full cleanup quest, just a, a couple cleanup moments. Wait! You're not leaving for the moon without me! Get back here! <laughs> Same old Nero. <laughs> Man, another long fade out shot. Ah, <sighs> finally, finally time to wrap up this little series. So, it's true then. The blasphemy and Gardamalt has been struck down. They were right to call on you, it seems. And with no other outstanding reports of blasphemy sightings, I dare say you've slain the last of them. Perhaps now we can finally start to put the final days behind us, strange though it may sound. On behalf of my fellow delegates and the Radiant Host, I extend to you our humblest thanks. I expect when I call on you, it will be under more fortuitous circumstances. Well, that would be a nice hope. I can't get that lucky though. Uh, we definitely want the crit ones. Those get used a lot more than any of the others. Ah, finally. And with that, we can finally put the roll quest to rest. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like and favorite and subscribe to join me for more Eosian adventures and as always, I'll see you in the next video. It's finally time to head for Pandemonium.